Thanks for the opportunity to give you our EO Data Cube Provider perspective. We are Stefan Aufzend and Stefan Meisel from EOX, a small but growing private company from Austria, working on EO Data Cube solutions since 2008. At the core, we see EO Data Cubes as an abstraction of EO data sources, a way to organize data coming from satellites by chopping satellite images into tiles and stacking them up through time. At EOX, we constantly touch different implementations of such EO data cubes. We have developed our own solution with the open source EOX server as core component in the View Server ecosystem, used, for example, in the ESA activity for an EO exploitation platform common architecture. We are taking part on various open source data cube initiatives, like the Open Data Cube project. We actively contribute to standardization in OGC working groups, like those for coverages and processing, pilots and testbeds. And last but not least, we are part of the Euro Data Cube Consortium, an ESA initiative bringing the huge archive of EO satellite sources like LANSA, the Copernicus Satellite Program or commercial VHR data, the established Sentinel Hub Cloud API, as well as the Xcube technology based on the established X-Array Python client library, all together on one EO data exploitation platform. All these efforts are based on an EO data cube abstraction, with each little data cube cell representing a measurement. A measurement we can look through in various dimensions, like time. Those time series capture how things are changing, and this information is as important as the patterns we can observe in a single satellite image. So for us, EO data cubes represent a quite sophisticated way to analyze data. But EO data cubes also must provide a framework to create them and to update them so we can integrate new observations as they come along each day. A lot of steps have to be covered by the framework. Understanding the underlying data products, defining data cube parameters, warping the images with all the topics around reprojection, rescaling, cropping and resampling, and finally temporal aggregation, which means combining and aggregating values for the same data cell from multiple images. These steps all require upfront decisions. What is your sampling interval on the time dimension, daily, three days, weekly, or do you stack all individual observations? But then, how to deal with swath overlaps? Many decisions must be taken, and each taken decision reduces flexibility down the road. The core principle of an EO data cube framework should be to delay such upfront decisions, which can be achieved by lazy evaluation. When an EO data cube is opened, only the structure and its metadata are loaded into memory. The actual measurements are loaded on demand and only for chunks intersecting the requested subregion. Operations that generate derived variables from measurements can be chunked in the same way, resulting in a processing graph providing a deferred concurrent execution model. But one challenge remains. The way how measurements are subdivided into smaller chunks has a substantial impact on processing performance, and there is no single ideal chunking for all use cases. For time series analysis, it is preferable to have chunks with a smaller spatial and larger time extent. For spatial analysis and visualization on a map, the opposite is the case. The strategy to effectively deal with such different analysis use cases is crucial for an EO data cube framework. Implementation choices percolate in the way how EO data is lazily loaded, but also how already materialized data is rechunked. Must this be done in an explicit step, or can this be done implicitly, if new types of analysis queries are dropping in? The better this abstraction, the easier will be user onboarding and the general adoption of the EO DataCube solution. On our platform, we try to achieve this by making the first steps as seamless as possible. With an interactive exploitation platform based on a hosted JupyterLab environment. Close to EO data, with necessary APIs and libraries for access ready for disposal. With curated base images and various example Jupyter notebooks for demonstration. 
and a way to package up for developed algorithms as application packages to execute them in a headless manner. So let's see that in action. DARPA, the Data Access and Processing, or as we like to say, Reduction API, a result from the previous OGC testbed 16. A ready-made API endpoint has been deployed and is now accessible from this notebook. This shown cell execution lists all existing data collections available on the DARPA endpoint. As you can see, we are using Sentinel-2 L28 data with all available bands listed here. Now we load a full data cube by just providing bounding box, time range and fields, including NDVI and NDBI as calculated fields. And so we can retrieve a multi-temporal data set just with one simple HTTP request. DARPA provides various other functionalities like aggregation over area or time. But let's have a look yourself. Feel free to explore the provided tutorials after a free registration on EuroDataCube. Now imagine that you could boost big EO data analytics by efficiently exploiting huge archives to allow you to explore an event or phenomena from different perspectives faster than ever before, using diverse sources, comparing and correlating multiple variables over time, just like turning a cube and accessing multiple facets all in one powerful computational environment. We welcome you to the world of Euro Data Cube. With this short snippet taken from our Euro Data Cube promotion video, we say many thanks for your attention and are looking forward to welcoming you on our platform, for example, as participants in the ongoing race dashboard challenges.